All right, this is another journaling addendum on Daniel Revisited. This time, we're going back to the focus on 69. Um, and I'm going to be making what I think are corrections. Okay. I mean, it seems pretty obvious that they ought to be corrections. So let's go. 69, okay. Solomon, we went through the text. Ending the paragraph, the legal paragraph at verse 18. And the reason why it ends at verse 18, first of all, textually, is because he's invoking the prayer that Solomon invented when he dedicated the temple in 1 Kings 9. That if anybody turns toward Jerusalem, which Daniel was in the habit of doing, and then prays toward the temple, that God will hear and restore. And those are the exact words that Daniel's actually using. It's real clear when you look at 1 Kings 9. All right, that Daniel's invoking it in his prayer right here in 918. The second thing to notice in 918, when you click on the link there, is all this. This is all valid. That's not the error. In fact, it's more valid than I thought. In other words, Daniel is using 69 weeks. The 69 is there because it's 69 weeks. Okay, the total that God replies using 62 and 7, when God replies to him, that's where it's coming from. That's what that 69 represents. I didn't make that clear, so I guess you could call this a correction in that sense. He's using 69 there, not merely for its like metaphorical doctrinal meaning, although that's paramount, but because the amount of time that Israel is short is due to the 49, Miss Sabbatical, plus the 434, which equals 69 sevenths. So it's real handy shorthand here. See, high, seven, you know, 49 missed sabbatical years because the total number of years that they didn't observe sabbatical was 434 which ends up going back through the last four years of Solomon. Okay. That's the only way it can go. Because the temple went down in 586. All right. So the last four years of Solomon, maybe he was sick or something. And so Rehoboam was co-regent. All right. Or somebody else was, you know, handling affairs point was is that the last four years got missed and Solomon did get into um, you know a pagan thing so there are lots of high places built during his time which is noted when it's taught when you know you, you get in the text in Kings about Manasseh all right Manasseh and Josiah for example okay so a total of 69 sevens so it's real important that that 69 be there and I did describe it rightly here, but I didn't cover it in the videos, and I apologize for that. So I guess you could call it my first mistake. My second mistake, and it's real obvious and I didn't notice it until I was making the videos, this, that's not a 69 difference, okay? It's a math error, just plain and simple. 346 minus 284 is 62, not 69. Okay, so now, and this really solves a problem I had. This N number here is not 284. It's 277. 277. Okay, so that this N number here is not to 238. It's to 230. 230. Okay. Now, when I did this video several times now, I didn't catch the math error. But every time I did it, I'm like, why isn't Mary picking up at exactly those years? Whenever I, when I did the whole Mary series, all right, I just accepted what I had written, not, not checking my own math. But, I, but it kept on hitting me. This is how God does it. When you get something wrong, he hits you. But I wasn't listening. Okay? I'm like, you know, this is a weird number. Why 284? What's historically important about 284? 
And the answer was nothing. Okay, and what's historically important about 238? And the answer was nothing. So what I did is I stuck in thinking, okay, well, I got to pay more attention to the history because I'm not finding anything. So I found the closest thing, which was the wars of the Diadochi and the Punic Wars. Okay. Now, going back when I realized, oh, golly, I made an error of seven years here. Okay, so now we go back and we say, okay, well, what was important about 277 and what's important about 230? Because Daniel's benchmarking a specific period of history here in the future as a prophecy in light of the man of time, you know, from Daniel 2 with the head of gold and the silver shoulders and all the rest of it. He's benchmarking historical epics. He's saying that, you know, whatever it is that he's benchmarking is really important in the change of the period of history relative to the prophecy. And here I was real vague about it, and I knew I was vague. Okay, now that we're going to correct the number. What's in 277 and what's in 230? Because Daniel's praying at the end of the year. All right, well, let's go look. 277, same source, okay, that I used for the link in Daniel. Is this one right here? It's kind of a cute source. I mean, you can verify it other places. I just happen to like the layout of this particular place, okay? Military Encyclopedia on the web. And it's not really, an, you know, accredited encyclopedia. It's somebody collecting stuff from all over the web and calling it. An encyclopedia. Okay, but you can verify the information elsewhere. You know, like I've got my military history books by Dupuy and Dupuy. I can verify this stuff. Okay, I got a lot of military history books. Okay, so what? What is what is 277? Let's go look. Okay, well the nearest thing is 276 because it's like end of year. First Syrian War. Duh! And this is what Mary references. See? First Syrian War. Ding, 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 ding. That figures large in her multiple chronology. Okay. Let me see if I can get the Mary stuff to show up real quick. Here's the Mary thing. Magnificat Mary draft. We'll do PDF version. Might take a while. Okay. Magnificat map to history. Hanukkah timeline is where she really does her thing. Okay. What she does is she takes, let me go to the end. Let me go all the way to the end. This is her map of time to the birth of her son from Hanukkah. Okay. Her first date line. I shouldn't be yelling. Sorry. Her first date line is 35, which is, you, you can read it two ways. Um, 35 years since Herod became Tetrarch, um, or her own age. 35 years since she was born. Okay? I'm suspecting that she's doing both. All right? That's her first date line, and this is her second date line, is 42. Now, what she ends up doing is out of that, and I, it's an extensive thing here, starting on page 11 of the PDF. She's doing an extensive recount of all of the political events that led up to the birth of her son. Okay, and one of the first ones that real that plays to Daniel 11, which is upcoming. So it plays to Daniel, and she's playing to Daniel, and Daniel was playing to it also in the book of Daniel, which is what he should be doing. Okay, it's the first Syrian war. Okay, which in our little timeline here starts off saying 276 to 272. Okay, that was caused by, and you get this. See, this is the second Syrian war. Okay, this is Strata Nike. Okay, 
So it's like right in here, she's bracketing the first Syrian war because it was due to the fact that Stradaniki married Seleucus. And that's in Daniel 11, 5, upcoming. Okay? That's what causes the first Syrian war. Okay? And therefore the second Syrian war. In other words, that's what Daniel 11 is all about. So what Daniel is doing down here is preview of coming attractions as part of the wars of the Diadochi, okay, the Seleucus portion. You know, because the Diadochi were the four, four generals who ended up splitting up Alexander's empire when he died. One of them would end up being called Seleucus, okay, and that was basically the territory that produced the first Syrian war, and he warred with Ptolemy, all right? Well, that's really important to benchmark it at 277. And the end of 277 is 276. In other words, the turning point. He's, he's benchmarking turning points. Yeah, because it was the first Syrian war that led to the second, the third, the fourth, the fifth, and the sixth. And that's what Daniel 11 is all about. Okay, so that was proper. See, it balances, but my math doesn't balance. It's going to be a while before I fix this error, so that's why I'm telling you now. That should read right there, highlighted in black. It ought to read 277, okay? And then I got an answer to you, well, but this goes down to 230, or you could say 231, but it's really more like 230 because it's end of year. Okay, and Mary benchmarks it also, again, in the middle. See, 244, see this is the Bernike marriage, 3rd Syrian and 4th Syrian wars, okay, right in between. See, because that's what Daniel 11 is about. And see, and here, here are the, the verses in Daniel that you can read. She is going back, she's doing what, what Daniel did to Isaiah, she's doing to Daniel, a retrospective exposition. But she's cleverly doing it using her own datelines because she's the mother of Messiah. So she's using herself and she's using the, the 42, which I already explained in the Mary videos. And she's doing a whole 7 times 7 timeline going all the way back to David at Hebron, just like Daniel did just like Isaiah did, just like Moses warned. It's the most sophisticated use of the math that I've seen in the Bible so far. And I guess that accounts for why Paul tags Mary when he starts Ephesians 1, 3 through 14. Okay? The whole series of events that's in Daniel 11, Daniel is, is, is talking to, okay? Daniel is talking to at the end here. Now in our timeline, therefore that was 277, then we have to go down farther and then you have to go to 230. And the, the reason why that's important, I don't, I'm sorry I missed it, is this. First Illyrian War. This is where Rome gets involved. It wasn't just the Punic Wars. Because the Punic Wars technically didn't have much to do with Israel. But the First Illyrian War will. Because it's due to the First Illyrian War that, that Rome basically says, Hi, we want to start exercising our own manifest destiny over the Eastern Mediterranean. Okay, that's where they got involved. You know, because Illyria is in, you know, um, the eastern side of Greece. All right, they didn't call it Greece then. They called it Illyria. All right, Rome got involved in that for the same reason that we got involved as America. We got involved in Latin America. That was under the Monroe Doctrine. The idea of the Monroe Doctrine in America, okay, is precedented in earlier nations, of course. And the Illyrian, First Illyrian War is the Roman version. Roman Republic, you know, finally got its own act together and it finally resolved its wars with the Samnites and blah, blah, blah. And then finally, once it, it got sort of centrally united, it starts going outside. And this is where it first exercises its own power, 230 to 28. So that's why Daniel benchmarks it, because this is when Rome starts to get involved in the Middle East. 
because if you're going to assert control, you know, in the Adriatic, then that's a short step to going to Crete and the, you know, all the rest of it and putting yourself on Egypt's doorstep, which eventually it does, which is what Mary picks up in the Magnificat. Okay, because see, starting about, she's going, she's picking up on what Daniel does starting in here. Okay, this is between the third and fourth Syrian wars. That's when the first Illyrian war occurs. First, not last. First. Okay, this is when Antiochus is now going to come to power. Okay, and he's the guy who invaded Egypt. And that's when, you know, the, the line in the sand thing occurred. Okay. Meanwhile, that's the Syrian wars are still continuing. This is Cleopatra, and that's Daniel eleven seventeen, and that's what produced what ends up becoming the Sixth Syrian War, ending with Hanukkah. See, all these events are interrelated, and Daniel's giving a very specific timeline to to when Rome starts to get involved in what will end up becoming you know, the affairs of Egypt. But it's not due to the Punic Wars. It's due to the First Illyrian War. Okay? Right here. All because I made a math error. So I apologize for the math error. Links will be in the video description so you can read this yourself. And I'm going to have to fix this Daniel piece. Okay? I'm not going to fix it right away. I don't have time right now. Okay, so that's it. Signing off.